Look out, footy's back. G'day, I'm Alex Donnelly, the host of AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. As always, joined by Bryony Dawson, fresh off a massive weekend of footy. Welcome in, Bryony. Thank you very much, Alex. Very happy to be here. Can't wait. All right, before we get into it today, please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is AFL Today. Give us a like, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And please get in the comments below. We'll get back to you in the comments. Maybe read out some fun ones if they come along there as well. Also, the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. AFLW Today across all of them, so get around that. Today, we have a guest in studio as well. Charlotte Baskaran from the Hawthorne Hawks comes in, fresh off a big win over Collingwood. You were there and you saw it. Oh, they were just elite on the weekend, mate. Like, it was so good watching them just string together like a perfect game. Mm. Collingwood didn't know what hit them. It was great. I enjoy Collingwood losing. That's just me, though. (laughs) Uh, It's me too. Oh, okay, good. All right. Uh, So, as always on this review show, we do it a little bit differently. Each team gets two minutes. We're still going to go game by game. That may get changed after next week when, you know, games start get playing in the middle of the week. So When there's 700 games a week. Which is great because that means more footy. You know, as as on the AFL Today show, Homer and the Donut Machine, just feed me footy. Feed me footy. Just feed me footy. Mid- midweek footy is all that I want. Before we get into it, we may as well take a quick look. Uh, small talking point out of the weekend. Chloe Malloy did her ACL. I had full depression after that. How do you think I felt? Oh, yeah, no, I get that. <laughs> what about me? Yeah. No, I get it. But <sighs> the panic that's setting in the media room was like, oh, knee soreness, it's fine. And then, oh, no, it's an ACL. No, it's knee soreness. It's, it's actually an ACL. We lied. Wasn't a great <sighs> 20 minutes for the Sydney Swans? Yeah, I know. I don't think they'd do it any differently, though, if they no. had their time again. No. Their main their main point was to look after the players that were about to take the field. Yeah. And, you know. Maybe they had a told them they might have had a bit more. Well, that's what Chloe Malloy said, who spoke brilliantly uh, yeah. to the media post game. She was like, wouldn't have done it any differently because I wanted the players to focus on the game and yeah. not me. Uh, Lucy McAvoy allegedly said to Scotty Gowans, like, we've got this, don't stress. Like post game when uh, Chloe addressed the playing group, she told the players that weren't playing in the game yeah. as soon as the news dropped. So because it was obviously out, people would start getting text messages. So it's like, girls, this has happened. Yeah. Team, sorry. You know, we move on wasn't great. How devastating for her though. Imagine like your season ending and then having all of these cameras shoved in your face and you're just another like statistic on an ACL injury board. Like it's horrific and just so much more needs to be done to protect the players. There's not enough. I'm sorry, but there's not enough being done to protect AFLW players and all of women in sports against these injuries and they're going to keep on happening until something happens. I'm just going to let you keep going there. You were cooking. And I <laughs> I am. Yeah. It makes me so angry. If this I was happening talk, to I'm male a dude, players, I'm a dude, I can't talk if to it this. was happening to male players, we would stop the game yeah. and we would make sure things got sorted. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah, so we need to wait till Jazz Garner, Marinoff, uh, who Don't else? Don't even Charlie put Robotum. their names in your mouth. Take them out. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. It'll take all of the superstars to go down before something. No, is done. they won't even do it then, Alex. They no. won't even do it then. You've got this pep. This fire. yeah, I'm like, I'm really riled up about yeah. it because Chloe's one of the best players in the competition. She's probably the. Is she the biggest name? Nah, she's there's a top ten. Yeah, yeah, and she's definitely in there. Yeah, for sure. So in good news, I guess, because, well, the technology worked. Good stuff. Yeah, so, I know. That was handy, wasn't it? Well, we could talk well, about it. It worked in Fremantle and Adelaide, which, yeah. you know, that game sort of wasn't important. Well, the goal wasn't important because it yeah. was game over by then. But Matty Gearan kicks a late goal for Carlton. Uh, go up for the touch on the line. We're not sure. We're all standing around there because we're all just like waiting for the FBI to just go, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Carlton need to win this, guy. so let's give them the goal. <laughs> And obviously, it's not a conspiracy, but we can see it because we don't get to see what's going on in, in the arc or wherever the person's uh, clicking the buttons and seeing if it's been touched or not. Yeah, it would be nice to see that stuff. But I think mm. while this is, you know, still being worked on and yep. all the policies and procedures behind it, we'll just let them have that behind closed doors for it's now. It's working, we can... so we're doing these ones. Yeah, because it was game-winning goal for yeah. Carlton. So that would have been a totally different result if we didn't have mm. the... In the, the chippies, the chippies in the ball. So thank Which, you. Them charged footies are working wonders. All right, let's get into the ladder check out of round two. I realize starting from next week after round three, we're going to have to go like week four and the ladder's just going to be 
chaos. So yeah. anyway, Hawthorne are on top of the <laughs> AFLW ladder after two rounds. You wouldn't have called it anywhere, would you? No. No. I know we were excited for it pre pre season starting. We but wanted to see it. Yeah. Now we've seen it. And now it's here. <laughs> yes. St Kilda. We had them in our top eight. Mm-hmm. Our second after beating my Sydney Swans at a cold, wet, windy. We'll get into Moravan later because I got I got takes on the Ferris wheel not being in in uh, <laughs> working there. Adelaide Crows in third. That's no real shock. North Melbourne in fourth on six points after a draw. Mm. We'll get to that one later. GWS Giants uh, down to fifth after their loss. Their percentage is still two hundred. Port Adelaide up into sixth after their huge win Friday night. Frio down to seventh. They were. Pretty bad yesterday afternoon. Richmond back on board, one and one. Swans out of the eight uh, after that loss. West Coast down to 10th after they got brought back down to earth. The D's down to 11th. Uh, that was that was not great at Casey Fields. Mm. The Lions, they're up, up into 12th. Essendon, 13th. Carlton, 14th. And then you get to Geelong, who were winless, but they've got the two points after the draw. And then the three teams without a point. Gold Coast, Collingwood, and the Western Bulldogs are still last Oofed. and just pencil them in. Collingwood will be uh, unhappy with that, down in the bottom three and winless. Yes, and same with Gold Coast being 16th. Not at all great. All right, we mentioned it off the top. Charlotte Baskaran is here and in the studio, so we'll get to that interview right now. All right, AFLW today. How good is this? The latter leading Hawthorne Hawks are like, you know what? We're going full media blitz this week. Hawkball 2.0. Charlotte Baskaran joins us in the studio. How are you, Charlotte? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Woo! Yeah, you're <laughs> the applause. Woo! Yeah, you're, you're, you're oh, the applause. Uh, Charlotte, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Great to be here. We'll start with the footy because we'll get to the fun stuff after this. Two from two, top of the ladder. Life must be pretty easy at Hawthorne at the moment. <laughs> um, I wouldn't call it easy. It's been a lot of hard work in pre-season and in the off-season, um, and it's great that, yeah, it's coming out to show everyone how we started, obviously, with two and zero and um yeah it's really exciting it is really exciting um i was on the boundary for fox um on the weekend with you guys out there and you just look magnificent it looks like everything's flying really really well um and there's there's a lot of confidence in the team yeah definitely i think um obviously with some new coaches coming into the program um we've worked really hard in the off season as i said and um yeah we've got a certain structure and way we want to play and um, as I said, I think that's been shown big time and um, everyone's buying into that, which is really good. Yeah, well, we had, sorry, just to talk about the off-season. Nobody has ever said, oh, we didn't really work hard in the off-season mm. before. I know it's the first time you've had a full off-season to train. What are some of the differences between like a Beck Goddard going into a Daniel Webster where things have like really increased for you guys? Um, yeah, as I touched on, I think it's just like the way we want to play. Um, everyone knows our brand and our style mm-hmm. and we want to be tough in the contest. Um, but then we also want to back our run and our speed. Um, and obviously getting that, um, space out the back really works mm-hmm. for us. And, um, obviously playing that half forward role at the moment, pushing up the ground and working back into that has been something that's been really good for us. And you're doing it very well. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a sense like before the season of like, we're pretty good here. Like just a lot of people, myself included, like I want to see them do it. And I've seen you do it. I'm like, oh, they're way better than I thought. But coming into the season, like, yeah, we're pretty good. Yeah, I suppose like in our two first practice games, um, we were kind of seeing how we were going to go and we did really well off the back of that, which gave us confidence as well. And yeah, coming into the season, like I think every week so far we've just grown and Mm. um, yeah, I think that's helping us win win the games. And you're playing Adelaide this week. So that's going to be the real yeah. tester for you, what the what the new skills and, and the game plan is going to ha- hold up against, you know, one of the top teams. How is everyone feeling? Is it the confidence to being like, let's really take it to Adelaide? Yeah. As Dan always says, like not to get too, too ahead of ourselves. And yeah, as you said, coming against Adelaide, they're a really good team in the competition. And I think it will be a really good test for us to see how we go up against, you know, one of the better sides. And um, yeah, I think it's just staying to our structure and sticking to how we want to play that, mm-hmm. that will kind of need to, um, happen this weekend to see how we can go backing ourselves against, yeah, that top side. Yeah. Great. What was it like watching, uh, Gilroy just on the weekend, just bomb goals from outside <laughs> oh, 50s, just like, it was oh, yeah. so good. Oh, yeah, it's still going. Oh, 
Let's go! Yeah, um, it is quite common. She yeah. um, obviously at training practices those as well and, yeah, always tries to get them right. But for her, yeah, somehow always happens in the game and works really well. Yeah, great super boot. And you kicked quite possibly one of the easiest goals I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> is that just the perfect coach's play, just tap down, bang, run into the open goal from the clearance? Yeah, um, it's something we've been working on again and um, sometimes at training, you know, it doesn't work perfectly, yeah. but then out on the weekend it, it worked and, yeah, it felt so good. It just looked like everything just opened up for you. It was yeah. like in slow-mo and it was yeah. just a tap down and you are like, cool, yeah, <laughs> no, plan this, done, bang, straight yeah. through. Yeah, it was quite nice. Is there that moment of like, why have I got so much space and time when that happens? It's just like, oh, no, go, sweet. Um, almost. I mean, I kind of read the flight of the ball when it was being thrown in and yep. I thought, oh, there's a bit of space out the front here. And I could be on here. Yeah, yeah. It's, I could be on. <laughs> it's going to land straight mm. there. And I thought, oh, get the timing right, run through and hopefully it comes my way. And yeah, it did. <laughs> mm. So as a club as a whole right now, obviously men's team flying big win in their final on the weekend. It must just be fun going to work every day and everyone's just having the best time at the moment. The club seems in a really good place. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously with the boys' success this year, they just look like they're having so much fun. Um, and I think that's following over into the female program as well. And um, everyone's just, you know, um, trying really hard really. And like, yeah, I think everyone's just really enjoying themselves. Um, Batesy was a late out. Um, on the weekend, does that sort of throw you at all? We know like Chloe Malloy, you know, didn't, didn't want to let the team, um, down when she knew she was out for the rest of the season with the ACL. Um, did you know that morning that Batesy was going to be out and does it, does it throw your game off at all? Um, no, I wouldn't say it would throw our game off. I think we just, like we get to the ground, we're already prepared. We've done all the back work yep. um, and everyone kind of knows what they need to do. So I don't think it really throws us off. Mm. Um, obviously she's, you know, one of our like leaders and great players in the, in the side. But I think that, yeah, all of us kind of stick to our structure and the way we want to play. So it doesn't really affect how we go about it. Yeah. Awesome. There's a bit more depth in the team this year, which is awesome. Mm. Let's get to the fun stuff. We've yeah, talked, yeah, yeah. We've, okay. talked, we've talked footy. Footy done now, Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go with one. You can get the sneak to the sneaker questions okay. after this. So Great. I want to know after, after a game, what is like your go-to cheat meal? Like you're just like, I've just run around for two hours in the sun. I'm going to eat something. Oh, I can never eat straight away after the game. Yeah. Like I'm just never hungry. But what did I have? Saturday night I did have pizza. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, Got a carb was, load after yeah. the yeah, game. Yeah, pizza or pasta. Um, so I'm missing the football part <laughs> in my carb loading. I need to probably start running more. <laughs> That's where I'm going wrong. Um, your nickname at the club is Carol. Yes. Please explain. Um, cause my name's Charlotte Baskaran. Yeah. Um, they've just come up with Carol because of Carol Baskin. So, <laughs> um, it's definitely stuck. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I'm shocked it hasn't moved to Christmas yet. Christmas Carol. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Go yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. And then, go, and then move Saint on. Saint Nick. And then yeah. you're yeah, Nick. Yeah, you move <laughs> on. So like Great. just progressive nicknames. Like, yeah. Don't mind it. Yeah. Chris, yeah. Move to Christmas. <laughs> then you move to present. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I think. Uh, you're, uh, we've just found out you're a sneakerhead. You are somewhat of a sneakerhead. Yeah. I'm like a not, I just buy the you're sneakers. I don't know about the sneakers. I see Do you know what I mean? Fake fan. Yeah. I'm a fake <laughs> fan. Um, but you're really into sneakers. Yeah. Tell me about how, how did that start? I don't know. I feel like I've just always loved shoes. Um, I've got plenty at home. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, sneakers is just kind of what I've gotten into the past couple of years. And, yeah, I've got a fair few to pick from. Do you do any kind of display box? I do have a rotating Stop. shoe. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. You've rotating. got a rotating shoe rack. Yeah. Is that something that you bought or is that built in? Um, no, I bought it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I, I, think got, I might need I, I, one of those. I have questions. These. So like, do you have to rotate them yourself or does the, the, the shoe rack actually do it itself for you? So it like, it's a, it's a circle and yeah. it just spins and then, yeah. That's awesome. Is there like a button that makes it spin? No, there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> that so it's a manual the next, spin? Yeah, that might have to be the next okay, upgrade. So like a lazy Susan for <laughs> shoes. Yes. yes, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. What oh, is, I like that. Don't tell me the price, but tell us what, like the brand and the make. What is the most exorbitant shoe that you've bought so far? I actually haven't bought too many expensive ones. Um, I kind of just, like, I've got a fair few dunks that I've yep. bought. Mm. Um, but I wouldn't say they're too expensive. They're just kind of different. Yeah. yeah. When you get that, you know, million-dollar contract that down the line <laughs> when the AFLW goes full-on full on <laughs> salary cap like the men's, what is the shoe you buy and why? And you can tell us how much this costs because that's fine. Oh, 
Because it's a dream. I've never really thought about that. <laughs> She's like, I just have a couple of spares. Of the mind and the, 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 the flies that make you hover. <laughs> yeah. yeah, something that made me quick. Yeah. Um, no, I haven't really given too much thought into it. I think well, at the moment Adidas is quite popular with yeah. the Sambas and the Spezials, but I don't know. I, f- I don't know. Yeah, I feel like maybe whatever's in style Whenever that is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't reckon she got the Marty McFly thing either, mate. No, that was a very. Back to the future. So you got it back to well, the future. Of course I did. I, th- I swear I saw one of them sold, for, like a pair of them sold for 15 grand recently. Mm. Wow. So you might have to Google like the Marty McFly sneakers. Yeah. It's... I got I got the Reebok pumps recently. The, yeah. Yeah. I love those. The old John Cena's. So yeah. We can go back that far. <laughs> Wouldn't even know who John Cena is. It's 20 years ago. Um, I've, I've got a back to a footy question. Um, a lot of the players, like the, the older players, they've spoken about how hard it was growing up playing footy and, you know, they kind of had to stop playing footy at, at 14 and, and, and that kind of stuff and there wasn't a lot of mentors or pathways or that kind of thing. You're kind of in the in the time where when you grow, grew up there were the pathways. Yeah. What, what was that like and what was your um, journey and what was the belief from your family, I guess, and coaches around being like, I think we're on here. I reckon you can go all the way. Yeah. Well, I started with Auskick when I was really little. Yeah. Um, I did that for about three years and I loved footy. Um, there weren't too many girls that played. Um, so I was kind of in and around the boys. Yeah. Um, and then I went down to my local side and, um, they didn't have any girls teams actually. So, They wanted me to play with the boys, but I got a bit scared and I said no. (laughs) (laughs) I looked it up. um, He was holding up the footy board at the time and I said to mum, I don't know what that is. And little did I know it was just where the people were playing in their positions. Um, So then I went over to athletics um, and did that for quite a while. I really love that. And, um, yeah, it's definitely helped me to this day with my running ability. Um, And then, yeah, stopped that uh, at about under 11s and then transitioned with some of my mates from athletics to footy. Um, we, um, trained down at Aberfeldy and since that first training session, I just absolutely loved it. Yeah, good. Um, I think it's just that team aspect, team environment, um, you know, learning a new sport was something that was new to me and like, yeah, I absolutely loved it the minute I picked it up. And ever since then, I just kind of went through the pathway. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, got I'm here today. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm so glad that there's that structure and pathways and, and you're being supported to be an elite athlete. And what were your family like helping you out with that along the way? Yeah. Um, mum and dad loved me when I was doing athletics as well. <laughs> um, they would drive me around everywhere. And cause I'm a December baby, they yeah had to always drive me around. But, um, yeah, they, they love footy now. Like absolutely love coming to watch me play and supporting me. And, um, yeah, as I said, they've kind of been my rock, um, since day one. And, yeah always supporting me and, yeah, helping me out wherever I can. Do they get nervous at the games? Like are they, like is dad off somewhere or is mum off somewhere? (laughs) Like don't talk to me, I just need to watch the footy. Um, No, they're not too bad actually. They're always together at the footy and um, most of my family will come along. My auntie's also one of my biggest supporters. Oh, amazing. She's she's always there and um, same as my uncle, he tends to watch it on TV at home. Great. Who's the harshest critic, like gives you a phone call after if you've done maybe something wrong and, you, and you're already down the dumps and then, Charlotte, look, I know you played well, but that kick, honestly. Oh, um, I feel like it would have to either be my mum or my uncle. <laughs> I knew it was going to be the uncle. I was like, this is totally, he's watching it on film and he's just re- rewinding it going, ugh. It's a bit uncle isn't it? Is. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. My uncle was the same when yeah. I was playing under 15s. I'm like, I'm a kid, leave me alone. <laughs> so growing up, were you a, like obviously playing junior footy, but were you a footy fan and who did you support? We can we can have what, what our fan base was before we get uh, drafted. <laughs> um, yeah, I absolutely love footy. Yep. Um, there'll be a couple of photos of me and my pies jumper. Ooh. Um, so yeah, Collingwood. Collingwood. Oh. <laughs> so oh. when you, now when you come up against them, is there a bit of extra motivation to be like, I supported you growing up. Now I want to like beat you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, especially on the weekend, like, yeah. <laughs> especially at their home ground yeah. too. It was, yeah. it was pretty nice to get that win. I like oh, that. awesome. <laughs> All right. Are we doing the, Do the final question? Yes. Okay. Hawks have made the grand final. Yeah. It's the morning of the grand final. You wake up. You've got no idea where you are. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. You look around, you know, it's time. You're like, I've got to get to a game. You're like, okay, you grab your stuff. You walk to the door to get out of this place and you pull off the door handle and you can't get out. 
you look at your phone and you've got 1% battery. Oh. You are like depleted. You might have 30 seconds on there yeah. to help you get out of this room and get to the grand final. Who on your team are you calling to get you out there when you've only got probably 30 seconds max to talk to them? And who are you definitely not calling? Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Um Probably definitely not calling um, Christy Stratton. <laughs> <laughs> so I like how the definitely not comes to everyone's mind. Show. Everyone like, comes first. Yeah, it's like, no. <laughs> who's the pest who's got no idea? Yeah. <laughs> and so why why not? Oh, I mean, she does, you know, answer my messages and stuff, but, you know, game of the morning, she's probably out doing her own thing. <laughs> but also who, useless in a crisis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit blase sometimes. Yeah. Um, who so who's the who's the reliable? Who's the problem solver? Running who just the door. gets th- things done? Or maybe yeah, is absolutely mm. running the down fire the door. Extinguisher just to- <laughs> can get the whole team together yeah. at a moment's notice. And be like, oh, let's get her out. I reckon it might have to be Gilly. Oh yeah. really, Aileen? Yeah. 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 Okay. It's a strange one, but I never would have thought of her. But yeah, yeah, thinking about that, I reckon she she probably would be there. She does seem pretty reliable. Yeah. And the, the Irish can be quite pragmatic at times. <laughs> or just skull a Guinness and run through the door. <laughs> like, there are two ways to solve a problem. And yes. One usually involves a Guinness. That's actually good. I spoke to her on the mm. weekend. Yeah. And I, I can absolutely see that for sure. <laughs> yeah. So before we let you go, how far can this team go this year? You're two from two, top of the ladder, high scoring team in the comp, and it seems like nothing looks – well, you're going to run headfirst into Adelaide this weekend as a massive test to start. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as you said, yeah, Adelaide obviously is going to be a challenge, but I think there's just no limit. We've done all the hard work and we back ourselves and we're just going to play week to week and how we want to play. And I think that's probably the most exciting thing is that we're just at the start and there's so many more weeks to go where we can show what we've got. There is no limit. <laughs> it feels a real Hawthorne thing at the moment. I yeah, love it. It's good. I love it. It's good to hear. All right, Charlotte, thank you for coming in today on AFLW Today. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> All right, how good was that? Charlotte Baskaran, a lot of confidence out of Hawthorne, seemingly. This this is going to be something to watch over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, love Carol. She was great, wasn't she? I hope they really take up the Christmas nickname, though. Yeah, I'm, no, that was not bad. I didn't mind that reference, yeah. actually. I get a couple, right? Like like a couple. Yeah, it's all downhill from here. Don't big note that. Just just yeah. take it. Oh, like and, it's a couple of week, not a day. <laughs> like It's a very like short list of things. Correct. All right. Ring the buzzer, Spence. Two minutes, team by team, as we roll through the games from a Friday afternoon, because it wasn't Friday night, it was Friday twilight, as the Western Bulldogs didn't kick a goal. Zero points, uh, zero goals, six points, defeated by Port Adelaide, 7 for 46. All right. Yeah, we've got to take a bit of a breath there yeah. for the old Bulldogs. We need to rip the Band-Aid off. Ooh. They're, they are horrible. Can I... Put a little bit of the Band-Aid back on okay. and be like, they weren't as bad as week one. They didn't kick a goal. I understand that, but they ha- actually had some moments where they were actually yeah. putting on some pressure, good link-up play, and I was like, ah. Oh. And then, of course, no goals were kick and they got beaten by a lot. But, um, yeah, I just, you know, they 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 had some good people. What they don't have is anyone up forward to kick any goals so, yeah. or any sniff of a goal I or was, even knows what a goal is or where they are positioned on the field. I was taking notes throughout the game. So they kept missing targets. They weren't taking advantage of their movement inside 50 all day. They had a lot of the footy for periods of time. They just don't know what to do. They get the footy like, ah! Yeah. It's, they're not structured and set up. I also think 16 aside on the MCG just doesn't work either. Mm. 18 asides, yep. you need to get to 18 aside. That's that's yep. another argument and another hill for you just to go off on <laughs> another day. Uh, I'm going to let you take that. Um, but Greg from the Dogs, holy moly, she's fun. Yeah. Like, excitement machine, am worried she's going to injure herself the way she barrels into contest at speed, though. Yeah, but that's good. It's exciting to watch. And it turns out that actually you don't have to be in any contest to get an injury these days. So why not go for it? I'm worried that there could be a concussion because she just straight in head first. Uh, All throughout the game, I thought just their efficiency going forward was horrible. Mm. I don't know if they're fit enough. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a pretty young side in there as well and inexperienced. And I know that, um, 
you know, they did they did have a, a full preseason, yeah. but again, when you've got new players, young players, there's not a lot of experience. But surely there's not you can that be fit men- enough. Yeah, but even the fitness, like preseason needs to be really hard so that the games are easy, yeah. right? And so if you don't have uh, that mental toughness or the the ability to know how far you can go in that preseason, mm. then it, it doesn't replicate on the field. So I just feel like with the youth that is in that team, they haven't got that that level up yet. Yeah. It was a bad night for the for the It dogs, was a very right? bad night for the dogs. You're absolutely correct. Apart In from, summation, yeah. a bad night for the dogs. Ellie Blackburn tried her guts out once again, but it wasn't wasn't to be. Uh, Port Adelaide. <laughs> Kirsty Lamb kicks two goals against her old club, but Teeks, as a night out, gets yeah. four at the G. Yeah, that was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah. She was absolutely fantastic. I also like that Kirsty Lamb kicked the first goal yeah. as well against her old club, and it's kind of like... I love Lammy. I really love Lammy. So I was really happy for her to, to see that. Um, Janelle Cuthbertson did rupture her ACL yeah. in her left knee. So she got Has scans on no Saturdays. Luck. Yeah. And a partial tear in the MCL as well. So went the full went Yeah, the full go knee. the full blown, yeah. full blown knee. So <sighs> obviously she'll go in for um surgery and you put another one on your little stats board. <sighs> Stats guy, keep count. Yeah. We don't need to. It's a lot. It's too many already. Uh, I just thought at times the that Port needed to lower their eyes with the footy because they had a yep. lot of short options on where they could have taken ground and kept moving, moving forward. But they're like, oh, because this ground's so long, we need to move it quickly, which yep. they were killing the dogs through transition anyway. But if they yep. lowered their eyes, this score could have been a lot worse than what it was. So you think the, the game plan was more about gaining territory yeah. as much as you possibly could? Yeah. But then they came out after half time and they started hitting the switch kick as well. I was like, hey, here we go. They've, they've seen what's going on. They've thought about it. And they've, they were hitting their targets. They were going forward. Uh, I thought there was a great couple of marks taken by Gemma Houghton as well. Oh, she's so good. Yeah. So good. But then got absolutely belted at one point as well in a contest late. And then the coach's like, nah, it's cramped. It's fine. <laughs> like, basically, it was a bit of a toughen up moment. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, but yeah. good win for Port. We saw signs in that game against the Crows. Yep. We said they had to come here and smash the dogs. I thought early on my record win was on, but then the they sort of pulled up like mm. it was a belting. Yeah, it was an absolute belting. Let's move across to Saturday. Saturday morning, the D's 2 3 15, Brisbane 5 3 33. So we'll start with the D's. You stop Kate Hall, you win the game. Well, that's pretty much it. She had uh, 10 disposals, one yeah. goal. Yeah, but going forward, there was nothing there for them. They It showed that they were missing Taylor Harris desperately. No, well, obviously only two goals kicked all day coming yep. off what they've done the week before against yep. Geelong. But you did ex- – I don't think they cop like uh, – not cop the heat, but they just weren't ready for what Brisbane were going to bring. Yeah, 100%. And I think that they're also riddled with injuries as well. Yep. So, you know, we know that they lost <clears throat> half of their team in the <laughs> in the trade season. Yeah. Now, Harris is out with the shoulder – Zanka actually went off in the final quarter with an elbow injury, yeah. uh, and they also lost their ruck, Lauren Pierce. Um, she's out with a scaphoid fracture. The scaphoid is in the hand. Yeah, I was like, where the hell yeah. is the scaphoid? So <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm saying it right. Is I'm pretty a, sure yeah, it's a scaphoid. No. Uh, it's in your, it's like just below your thumb or something. Oh. Uh, anyway, so she's had surgery on that. And because there's a couple of blood vessels and yeah. stuff in there, sometimes it can be like a couple of months recovery. So right. season over. Th- like they've lost their ruck. They've lost Taylor Harris, one of their best players. And they've also lost Eden Zanka, who does kick all the other goals if Kate Hoare isn't kicking yeah. them. So... They, they've been absolutely gutted, mm. but I they did- got run all over the park and just could not keep yeah. up. Yeah. Um, I did love Pisano getting her first <laughs> AFLW goal on um, debut, and it was Melbourne's first goal, which came in the third, third quarter. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was a tough day at the office for Melbourne. Let's move to Brisbane. Uh, they absolutely smacked the D's in the clearances. Won that thirty-three to nineteen. They were they were up for this because they knew if they dropped this game, it is a long way back in a very short season to go zero and two. I had them at zero and two. I know. So I was going for Melbourne. I tipped the D's as well. Uh, <laughs> Dakota Davidson just went, nah. Yeah, not enough of this. Two weeks in a row. Enough of this rubbish. Like, let's go. That was a very good performance 
are coming a week after what was a very poor performance by yep. her lofty standards the week before. And I think, yeah, Daxi takes that upon herself to get that. She got three goals. Yeah. Uh, but in that final term. Lays five tackles. Yeah, yeah. In that in that final term, she absolutely hunted down a Melbourne player for holding the, the, yeah. holding the ball. Um, she had it on the boundary 30 metres out and she just, just did like a full set shot mm. in those conditions. She's... She's elite. It's the windiest place on earth, Cramman. Yeah, it is. It's pretty. It's not great. Yeah, it's up there. Ali Anderson just went, I'm going to break the AFL record, AFLW record for possessions today. Had 43, gained 600 metres, seven tackles, seven clearances. Uh, if it's possible to give someone six votes, probably going to be for this game. <laughs> yeah, it was Al- insane. It was just like, yep, another one. Oh, yep, another one. Oh, yep, another one. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Somebody did... Um, I read an article, saw a post over the weekend, and someone said um, 43 disposals in a women's game equals something like 54 or 55 oh, in, with a, the in a time. men's time. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. So it's, that's, she's elite. Um, and I, she just, she looks really fit yep. this season as well. And I just think that preseason, that full preseason that everybody's had, um, has got everyone in really good shape. So I love watching her play. Yeah, 43 disposals. It's just, it's insane yeah. in a shortened game as well. well <clears throat> anything else to t- touch on with Brisbane before we move on? No, I'm happy no. with that. Happy with They're the They're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> move on to Perth. West Coast, three goals, 725, defeated by your bomb raise, 6541. Life isn't easy, Daisy Pierce. She learnt that one quite quickly. Yeah, well, I mean, I I bet against the Bombers. Yeah, no fake, yeah, fake yeah. fan. Well, I'm not a fake fan. How dare you? Uh, no, I just thought over there, I thought they'd be pretty um, pumped to get uh, a home turf win, but they still looked pretty good. They still won the clearances. Yeah, so I think there's some real positives that they'll take out of the way that game, the way that they can move the ball. They're really backing themselves and they're still able to play with some intensity. They just need to find a little bit more composure um, under pressure. Yeah. And I think that they will still take a lot of positives out of this game, West Coast. I think that's sort of what uh, let Ella Ro- Roberts down. She wasn't as effective with the footy. Still got a hand, hand on it a lot, but uh, had 10 hand passes from 16 possessions as well. That shows that sort of the pressure she was under, but a couple of clearances as well. There's Signs there is a very awesome footballer. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think she looks she looks really really good. Mm. I can't really sort of give too much to the Eagles because I thought they were okay. They weren't great. Yeah, it, it was a it was a big drop off after last week. But I think also that's you're going to mention this as well. You have the round two blues theory. Yeah, oh, yeah. Not Carlton, we, but just in general. It comes it comes from um, theatre. You know, I've got a theatre background. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, and, you know, it's called Second Night Blues. And, like, you know, because you have this big opening night performance yep. and that's what everyone's there for, blah, 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 and the second night show is usually a bit, you know, not so good. And I just feel like uh, – this round two is your second second round blues. Okay. There's been a little bit of um, you, off play, LC, uh, ACLs, there's low scoring, there's all that kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, everyone's in the in the downward uh, in spiral at the moment. Yeah. Um, but I thought West Coast, yes, they had some costly misses in front of goal, um, but they're things that are able to be fixed and tightened up for the next game. There was one play in the final term where Hosking got a free kick in mm. front of goal, right? She kicked two set shots in front of goal last week. But no, Lewis takes it, plays on, and misses from it's, 20 metres It's out. a coach killer. I'm like, oh. We, we do all mate, no mates on the AFL show. Yeah. Where it's like at the end of the game you get on the bus and so you, you look at him and go, oh, yeah, you, righto. That's that. That's an old mate, no mate. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent. Bombers, I got it. I got it wrong a week. I got them mixed around. I I thought this game that Matty Gay played on Saturday was going to be in round one, just taking a ton of marks and gaining meters. Seven hundred and eighty nine meters gained from twenty four possessions. Classic football stats of twenty two kicks and two handballs. Love it. That's awesome. That's my kind of a game. Yeah. Like, none of this handball business. Get the <laughs> footy and kick it long. No, she was really important for yeah. Essendon. And I think um, 
yeah, after last week, she's probably thinking in her head, I need to step up yep. a little bit more. Bonnie's out of the team and that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, she really stepped up. They were set up quite well defensively and then mm-hmm. they used that to rebound quite well, I thought. And then, of course, you know, Manny Prasparkas was just like, yeah, I'm just going to have another 27 again. It's yeah. cool. Just just watch me watch me get it done. She's very good, Manny Prasparkas, isn't she? She's quite good. She's not the number one Prasparkas. <laughs> I'm going to die on the I hill. I love how this is going to go. Right. But Press Parkers actually ended the game with ice on her quad as yep. well. So they played down that injury concern, but yep. they could be Chloe Malloying us. Maybe we're yep. going to start a, ter- a term, like when we clubs align. We got Malloyed. Yeah. Well, it's, like, it's like, yeah, you got Bevo. Now it's you got Malloyed when got it comes Malloyed. to injury. But in fairness, after, after the round one game as well, Maddie came off at the end of the game absolutely cooked. So yep. it could be still working into the season. So just, you know, sore, crampy, everything hurts. Yeah. I hate my life. Yeah. Because, you know, well, I hate my life when I wake up at 33 years old. My back hurts. Maddie Pressparkus never hates her life. No. Right? Just She's so got a know. great life playing yeah. footy for the bomb rays, just getting yeah. a bunch of the footy clearances, amazing. tackles. And Georgia Nenskowen continued her good form to start the season too. Great form. Couple of dodgy deliveries into the forward that 50, That happened mate. last week though, so I was... I was like, George, you just got to you just got to take an extra second and just line up. She was not kicking mm. to advantage. There was a lot of over the head. Like if she can just pop it on the chest of one of the forwards, Essendon are going to be a, a lot stronger contenders. I do want to do a shout out for um, Chloe Adams in yeah. her debut for the season to replace Georgia G, who is still nursing, a, a noise, nursing, nursing uh, a little bit of calf muscle soreness, mm. but Chloe Adams, first kick of her career, first goal no. of her career. I love those ones. I really love them. I want to point out also, I said Essendon last week were terrible defensively. They laid 21 tackles inside 50 this week. So yeah. The pressure was on. Yeah. So it's a good lift from the bomb race. Didn't really expect it from them. Got no faith. How dare you. Collingwood, 3-8-26, <laughs> defeated by Hawthorne, 11 7 We've talked up how good the Hawks were. Starting to be a little bit concerned about Collingwood. They might not be much good. They got belted. Yeah, I mean, they did. They did. In the end, they got belted. They were still in it for for most of the game. Uh, I thought Sarah Rowe had a really good game with 24 disposals. Um, she's really, really reliable, and I love watching her play footy. Uh, I thought Brie Davey was pretty quiet, um, only the 14 possessions, but did um, – Take take a mark and laid six tackles and had five clearances. So not too shabby, um, but a little bit quieter than than what we see for Bree. And if I may, before you jump in, Alex, uh, Sabrina Frederick, uh, I just think she's exceptional this year. Yeah. Um, I think she's really improved her fitness, but also just her uh, confidence and ability around the ball. She didn't take a heap of marks, but every mark that she took counted like every single one and they're contested marks. So um, I think she's playing some of her best footy, which I absolutely love to see. Benici was good again, uh, had was average with the footy in hand last week, much better this week, but st- like still room to improve. Only went at about 50% efficiency. So yeah, keep that up. 40, keep going. 49% mm. efficiency. It's, it's um yeah, I think y- you want a little bit better than that. Mm. Um, from one of your best players, so yeah, uh, I can't really. I did. I only caught the highlights of this game. I was traveling to, to and from Sydney at this point, so I'm only going off what what I've caught from them. I thought defensively they let themselves down a few times as well. It just felt too easily that Hawthorne were able to cut through them. Uh, so that'll be something for them to work on. It happened last week against the Swans as well. Yeah. So that defending transition might be a big focus this week. It's hard when you've got Gilroy, you know. Bombing them from 55. Bombing them from 50. I was just like, she literally, like, I was on the boundary yeah. there. Let me talk about Aileen. Yeah. Well, okay, we we're, we're talking Hawthorne. about Hawthorne. So <laughs> go, go on. Talk about Hawthorne. Being on the boundary where she kicked that from, you could just hear this like, ooh. Yeah. And I just, I've just gone. It, is, it was it's like abs- a driver off the tee. Oh god, it was an absolute ripper. I love watching that kind of footy. It's so electric and exciting, and yeah, it's amazing. So her moving forward has been a great move. Another oh. couple of goals, eleven touches, three clearances. But it's like, get the footy 50, 60 out. It's going to the top of the square. Yeah. None of this. I'll kick it to twenty. It's going long. Yeah. And if there's no one there, it's going all the way through, yeah. you know. Um, I interviewed her after the game as well as, yeah. as part of Fox, and she's just awesome. It's like your typical, like, Irish player, 
chat, loves a good laugh, loves a, a good piss take. So yeah. it was awesome. So uh, Tilly Lucas Rod again was quite good. Had 27 di- disposals, but was seemingly everywhere. Nine marks, couple of tackles as well, but just yep. set up a lot of the play. They're good. They're really, really good. Um, I had Tilly Lucas Rod in there to mention as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Mattia Breed is an absolute gun. Yeah. She is so exciting to watch. She had 15 disposals and a goal. Um, she's a really, really exciting player. I don't think she's playing her best footy yet, but I love the confidence and she's definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, a few things for Hawthorne. The rebound off their defensive 50 was elite. Yeah. Um, that's when they were really able to get their game on their terms and move at a rapid pace to their um to their forward line. Their it, delivery inside 50 was pretty good too. Um so their disposal efficiency compared to Collingwood. So Hawthorne's dispose, disposal efficiency was at 70%, Collingwood's at 56. You're gonna win a lot of games of footy when you're that efficient right? with the footy. And efficiency inside fifty uh, inside fifty, Collingwood fifty six, Hawthorne seventy one. Yeah. So just that you can see how Hawthorne smashed Collingwood. Yeah, Hawthorne good, Collingwood maybe not. <laughs> Punt Road, Richmond five eight thirty eight defeated the GWS Giants four three twenty seven. Richmond still struggling to play a full game of football mm. this time. It, it it wasn't the first quarter this week. It happened to be the last quarter. Well, the second half really. Mm. They played fantastically in the first half, and GWS just chip, chip, chip away. This yeah, is something they did, that, didn't that they? Richmond really need to work on. Uh, Sarah Hosking back in the side. Yeah, it's good to see Hos go out there. She was the difference in the end. Yeah. Kicks two goals, and and well, it does win them the game because they they win it by eleven points. So her two goals vitally important there. Mm-hmm. We, do we need to talk about the, the the problem that's going on in Richmond with the goal kicking? Yes, go for it. Oh, why do I have to do it? Why do I have to be the one that gets thrown <laughs> under the bus? <sighs> Just I'll give you a stat first. Okay. Richmond had tripled GWS's GWS for inside fifties at one stage for twenty two to seven. Oh, that's not good. No, it's not good. Katie Brennan, what's going on, Katie? She had a couple of score involvements. Yeah, I know, but I expect so much more from her, though. I know you do. Like, I know you do. Ford's game, though, ten touches, ten kicks. Mm-hmm. So love that. <laughs> like, love that. But. <clears throat> I need some scoreboard impact. Yep. I'm starting to Okay, it's not concerned because I think I thought Richmond were going to be in the mid table anyway. Yeah. But y- this could be like what I expect of the Western Bulldogs in the AFL is I expect so much more from this team yet I'm constantly just like you're not that good. Yeah. With yep. this list you they need to be defeating a team like GWS very handily. Mon Conti had a quieter game, only 18 touches. I thought it was well shut down there by the Giants, but it's just there wasn't, there's nothing for me to go, yeah, Richmond. Like, yeah. I'm not feeling it. Yeah. I'm not feeling it at all from them. I think they just sort of held on at the end. Oh, they, they yeah. absolutely fell in. They got beaten in the disposal around the game. GWS got their handball game up and running. Their, Richmond's disposal efficiency was less than 40%. Like, it just wasn't good. They got, yeah. they got beaten in clearances despite winning hit outs. Like, yeah, you're one and one, but it's like there's an alarm bell ringing there somewhere. Yeah. Well, the Giants finished with far more disposals. So they had 236 to Richmond's 198. Yeah. They used them out of clearances as well, 26 to 21, and ended up uh, with more tackles as well, 79 to 57. So um, their pressure was the Giants, though it's GWS, their, their pressure was amazing in the second half. Um, but I think that they just sort of left it all a little bit too late. Yeah, and that's it. It was it was the it was the slow start that's cost GWS the game in the end because mm-hmm. they were rollicking back into this game, but going down four goals to one at half time, being minus twelve and inside fifty, so has absolutely let them down. But then you sort of have have a look at sort of how they've played. Like Alice Parker works in the game. Uh O'Dowd again. Yeah. Good. Like just like, ah, oh, you're gonna be a problem for everyone you yep, come up against. 100%. This year. That was really good to see. Yeah, uh, so we'll move on to GWS from that. So Zala Goldsworthy again pops up, thirteen touches, kicks a goal. I'm just waiting for when they just go full-time mid. Just waiting. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Okay. I, I feel that. I feel that's her future. I feel like she could go anywhere. Yeah, I know. But f- <laughs> full, I want – it's the – get the footy to your best player as many times as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. So Anderson, just give Anderson the footy. Mm-hmm. Give Zala Goldsworthy the footy. Okay. So it's, it's, it's okay. like North Melbourne, Jazzy Garner. Give Jazz the footy. Like, 
Give the best players I mean, the footy, things will happen. North Melbourne's just, pretty stacked for good players, mate. Yeah, but let them find the footy and things things eventually happen there. But this is a – I expected the Giants to lose, but I come out of it actually thinking more of the Giants than what I did pre-game. Yeah, absolutely. Like there's something there to go, okay, no, there's, there's something to work on here. You're not – There's it, a little bit of spark. There's a little bit of something. They're going to cause teams problems who are off their game. I think there's at least something to analyze there about what they're doing and, you know, things that they could tighten up to do better and that kind of thing. It's as opposed movement. to like a bulldogs where yeah. you're like, I could, we can't even talk anymore about yeah. it, you know? So I think there's there's good stuff in there for GWS. I, th- I think it's with GWS to just hitting the, hitting basic short targets. Mm-hmm. Once you start hitting those short targets 20, 30 meters away, get get the game going, that's when they'll start winning it because they're having a lot of possessions, but it's not clean. Yep. And once we get to that, they'll start winning. Let's get to, where was it, up at uh, the Great Barrier Reef Arena, (laughs) Gold Coast. G-B-R-A. Sure. (laughs) With the GCS defeated by the uh, CBFC, 38 to 39, the Suns. They had a chance to win it. Lucy Single. Where was the handball off? Mm. There was a runner there. I I was watching it. I was at Barab watching it. She gets the ball. Handball, handball. Goes the flying snap and misses it. That's, oh, that sucks. Yeah, I know. Like, I know. I can't blame her for going for this shot, but it's like time over again, she just dishes the handball. Yeah, yeah, it's hard because, you know, you don't know what the message is from, <clears throat> sorry, you don't know what the message is from the coach, um, you know, saying like, back yourself, take it on, you can do this, or yeah. it's like, you know, or look for your teammates. Everyone's there. We've got mm. the numbers. Get in there. You like my coach voice? Yeah, do. Come on. Get in there. Sorry. Just waiting for you to give me a spray when that I do was, a bad show I'll one probably day. Will, I probably will give you a spray. That's fine. Uh, Charlie Robottom, there's three votes coming your way. Yeah. That was awesome. 35 touches, 10 tackles, seven clearances. Just That's a good day, isn't it? You talk it? of the everywhere <laughs> game. This was the everywhere game. Yeah. Honestly, just popping up everywhere. Goal, I know it's five goals, eight to five, five goals, nine, but... Uh, they were wasteful in front of Colt and yeah. the Suns. They missed a few easy shots. Uh, I thought Daisy Darcy was really good running off halfback as well. Saw a lot of the footy there and a lot of just – it was just get it forward. And I enjoy that because it, it was a turnaround from last week where they sort of stuffed around with the footy a little bit. Yeah. And it seemed like the message was, no, let's just get it and go. Yeah. Whereas last week they were just – they were re- – again, they were wasteful in the forward 50. <sighs> I, I liked I liked Lauren Bella as well. She only had four touches, but twenty six of her sides thirty hitouts. While the Blues had a total of twenty three taps overall. <laughs> but so Lauren Bella's always dominated in the ruck. So yeah, yeah she's awesome. So the Gold Coast Suns are now zero and two. They miss finals now. At the start of the season, you would have said it one and one at worst, two and zero oh at best. Yeah, that's a yes I yet. am. I'm not ready to make a decision on that yet. So I'm. I'm ready to throw. I'll, I'll throw. I had him pretty high up. I did too. <laughs> I think I might claim this. Uh, this one late. Ah, uh, get to the flag. Uh, the flaggers. Got to call them the flaggers because they've won a game. They're up and about. I'm going to start with Abby McKay again. <laughs> Two weeks in a row, she's been phenomenal. Yeah. Twenty four touches this time, but just in and under is that first person to get the hands on the footy and then dish out to the teammates. Every team would kill to have a player like her. Mm-hmm. She is so tough. I don't want to run into her. It'd hurt. <laughs> There's a footy on the ground and I'm just like, no, nah, man, just you go. You're cool. No, nah, she's absolutely awesome. Yeah. Uh, I thought Carlton, like, <sighs> they stuffed around with the footy. Is, it, mm-hmm. I keep going, stop stuffing around with the football. It's going to yep. be a hill I'll die on all year. Yeah. <sighs> they but won. I, yeah, they won. But at the same time, you know, they're trying to – they're trying to execute a game plan as yeah. well, you know, and it's, and it is round two. You can see it as stuffing around with the footy, but it's what the coach wants them to do. Yeah. Whereas me, I'm just a simple, just get it and go. But it's also about you need that um, basic skill level as well. Yeah. You've got to be able to take those contested possessions. Yeah. Um, this ground looked kind of cool. As a side note, I Did wouldn't it? I wouldn't mind to gather around. The, <laughs> the glare late in the game was horrendous, but like early <laughs> on, it was good. Apparently there's chat of a gather round up there. Great. I want to go there. Are we going to go on a trip to gather round up, up at the Great Barrier? I Arena? would love that. Like, we could be, I could wear shorts. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's warm. Not, it's not great. You're, you're as white as me as well. Yeah. I, I tan though. Do you? Yeah. I do not see that. I know. It's a shock, right? Yes. Yeah. I can get a tan. 
Wow. It takes a lot of work, but I can get a tan. I emceed the on-ground MC at the grand final that Melbourne won up, yeah. in, up in Brisbane, and I wore shorts because it was... 38 million yeah. degrees, yeah. And it was just the worst decision Beatrice? I've ever made. <laughs> Beetroot legs? It's so white. It's yeah. just so white, and I tried to, like, be a Queenslander, and it was just horrific. So they just like won't be doing that again. I'll be hot in some pants. <laughs> Good chat, Carlton. <laughs> All right. well, I do want to say one thing. The yeah. Blues were really strong around the ball. Yeah. Okay, they won contested possessions 121 to 103 and the clearances 27 to 22. So they're doing a lot of things right. And, of course, the uh, the chippies in the ball got them the win. Yeah, God bless the ball chips, hey? <laughs> Arden Street, North Melbourne and <clears throat> Geelong play out a 36-all draw, which shocking, one, because it's a draw, but two... Shocking that North Melbourne play out a draw. Jazzy Garner had it on a string in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. This was insane. The first clearance is just tap down handball inside 50. You take you take the mark, you set the tone, but it, it was, a, I thought, a simple chess mark. Goes, fall, falls away, and that play sort of sums up North Melbourne. Like, mm. did dominate with the footy in hand, but sort of really couldn't dominate the clearances as well. They were getting their hands to the footy, but the pressure from Geelong was phenomenal. I thought in the first half that this this is just going to be just a whitewash. This mm-hmm. this game is going to be over and over yeah. in a big way. North were moving the footy so well, obviously using their home deck at Arden Street well, know exactly what they're doing. Kate Shearlaw for the second week in a row was fantastic. But at, at 29-12, with a quarter and a bit to go, you win that game. Yeah. You don't look, they didn't lose, but you win that game of football. What went wrong? Do they queue in the rack? Are they a bit flat? I think the rain. I don't think they play play well in the rain. I think oh, they had a couple of little. They're they're, um, they're a dry deck soft team, are they? <laughs> flat track bullies. I think uh, I've put in my notes here. North are going to need to get the old uh, the hose out at training and just give a little spray on the ground, or just and, get the other uh, super soaker. Just go. Whoosh, yeah. Just just run through that a few yeah. times. They need uh they need a little bit of help in the wet. Um I thought that their kicking inside fifty um wasn't great. They no. just couldn't find a, a a target, even in that um first half, even when they were playing really well. Um, it all just felt a little bit um rushed to mm. me. A draw. Like for that they're still unbeaten. Oh, it was flat. It it, when that siren went, they were really, really flat. And I think in the final term when Morrison um, kicked that goal to put Geelong in the lead, I think they might have had like a little... Come to Jesus moment. Yeah, a little tiny blip um, that like sort of got into their psyche, into their confidence a yeah. little bit. Um I think North is the better team. I oh, think they'll be really, are. really disappointed with how they played um, and they'll, they'll, they'll take a lot out of that. Yeah. I think, yeah, there's a lot to improve on for them. We saw, we moved to Geelong. We saw a lot of improvement from them after their defeat last week to the D's. Amy mm-hmm. McDonald, three votes? Yeah, yeah. I, I know you love Amy McDonald. She's she's having a, an absolute blinder of a season. I might I might have to move. I'm not, I'm not going to move on, but like uh, uh, Prisparkus may get moved on for Amy McDonald in a second. Really? If this form keeps up. I got, Fascinating. Well, you know, she she does look like she's nursing an injury still, uh, Georgie Prisparkis. Yeah, she was pretty quiet on the weekend. Only the 11 touches, but was in there in the last couple of clearances when it mattered, but feels a step off. Yeah, So agreed. We heard that there might have been a quad issue going into round one and still looks like she's working her way through it. Mm-hmm. I think if she's up and going, they potentially win this game because 11 yep. touches is low for her output usually. Yeah, 100%. Um, Did you say, what about when Webster's run too far when she's kicked that awesome goal? <laughs> That sucks. <laughs> but I called it last week in the GWS game. Yeah. If you run too far, you get pulled up. Well umpired. <laughs> yes, I'm the fun police, but rules are rules. Oh, and I'm sorry. God. It was awesome, but you did run. Uh, watching, I was like, you've run too. Yeah, there's yeah, the whistle. Cu- couple of extra steps there. Yeah. Um, I thought Geelong looked really good. I thought they looked confident. I th- confident. I thought they were um, taking the game on a little bit and backing themselves. And that was probably their game plan because, you know, how else do you beat North Melbourne? They're such a strong team. Yeah. Um, I think their forwards really threaten North's defenders. Um, And if a couple of balls just had bounced a different way, Geelong would have been the winners. Yes. Um, Their coach, Dan Lather, said uh, in the press conference afterwards, he's like, 
we'll take it. We're not happy, yeah. um, but it steps forward for yeah. us. Which it is after last week because that was a game that they definitely threw away against the Ds, I thought. Yeah. I thought their forward pressure was excellent as well because that's where North Melbourne ha- have their outlet out of defense. They mm-hmm. transition from defense to attack so easily yep. that they didn't let them get away with it as much as North would have liked. Mm-hmm. I thought Nina Morrison was really good as mm. well. Um, finished the game with 19 disposals, five marks, four tackles, and three inside 50s. I realized we haven't done how the fan bases are feeling. Cats fan bases, Cats fan bases, like, oh, that's annoying. We should have won that. Yeah. And North are like, still unbeaten. Still unbeaten. <laughs> still unbeaten. Stats guy. North will be feeling the exact same way. Yeah. That they absolutely should have put that away. Uh, let's go to St Kilda beating the Sydney Swans at Moorabbin. Great setup down at Moorabbin, by the way. I was there. 6-6-42, defeating the Swans 4-2-26. Nick Dalsano is a really hard taskmaster because I asked him after the game if he was happy about how his defense, they stood up in the face of adversity because the Swans had the footy in their forward half a lot. So the mm-hmm. Saints were defending a lot. He's like, yes, but we've also got to look at other factors of our game. Why is it getting down there so easy? So he's just like, come on, midfield. It's like, it was just a subtle yeah, little yeah, whack. Yeah, nice. And I was like, but then you've transitioned. It's like, and he's still like, they're, St. Kilda are 2-0, and oh, and he's like, we're still not playing good not footy. Not good enough. Which is great for yeah. St. Kilda fans because that's the thing to take out of it. If your coach is happy with the win yeah. but still disappointed with how they've executed, mm-hmm. I think there's a lot to go off there. Uh I thought once they once they finally got the footy in their hands and in the wet, they transitioned quite well. I did think that they both teams were terrible in the first quarter when it was windy. They just mm-hmm. it's like keep it away from the Ferris wheel. It's windy. <laughs> it is really hard in the wind. Yeah, but it it's affects like, don't everything. Don't go to that pocket every time. They're just like we're going to go to that pocket. Sometimes it, you can't help it when it goes to the pocket. Yeah, but someone's kicking it that way. Make the decision to go towards the bench. Um, I th- yeah, we had the uh, late goal from Jesse Wardlaw, the long yeah. bomb from 55 yeah, to seal love it. That. Love because that. there was a little bit of panic setting in at Marabin late in the game yeah. when the Swans kicked a couple of goals. Yeah, and 100%. It goes back to we talk about fundamentals all the time. They kick those easy set shots from 10 metres out at the start of the co- the start of the game. This game's over. It's 40 to nil at halftime basically and, and they're, they're done. That's when I think uh, Dal Sano was let down. He's like, Got to kick them. Yeah. And that's where I asked him, I was like, disappointed with your goal kicking? He's like, yes. Yeah. But like, you've got to kick them. They had, I think they'd kicked five behinds at one point or something, or six behinds at one point before they'd kicked a goal. Yeah, six behinds. And then they piled on like three goals, I yeah. think. But yeah, he you don't want that kind of inaccuracy at all, no matter no, what the weather is. No, not at all. But then th- there was a lot of good things to take out of it from St Kilda as well. Like Jamie Lambert was fantastic, but I thought Tiana Smith was the best player for the for the Saints. Yeah, she was excellent. Yeah, t- played the conditions well, clearances, tackles, did a bit of everything, was in and under all day. I was like, okay, that's that's a good game, but Saints are 2-0. Yeah. That's good. I thought the Saints were harder at the contest as well, um, and they lead in contested possessions, 61-47, and tackles 32-19, to which was just at half time. So it... They're, they're pretty impressive. I know it's not perfect. They didn't kick um, very accurately at all. Um, and Serene Watson might actually have a case to answer for from the MRO for a, a forceful dump tackle on Brooke Lachlan, yep. uh, which was in the second quarter. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be a week, yeah. you'd think. Yeah. All right, let's get to the Swans. This is one that they'll be annoyed that they haven't figured out a way to win the way the games ended up. They... Had, haven't figured out a way to win without Chloe Malloy. Is well, the, that what you mean? Not that. It's they had the ball in their Ford 50 in their own half for so for so long and just couldn't figure out a way to score yep. or to find the right possession. There was either overuse or not enough use. They were just so wasteful with the football. It was their w- equal worst halftime score of all time with one behind. Okay. They were dreadful in the first half. Yeah. It was as as a I am a Swans fan at heart and sort of trying to stay impartial watching the game. I was tearing my hair out watching Mm. it going, this is just so frustrating. Like Laura Gardner was working her backside off with Lucy McAvoy, but none of the team was sort of up and going with it. I thought Ella Heads had a great first quarter though, but just that connection between mids and forwards, which is where Chloe Malloy is, which, you know, it just let them down. I thought Ali Morfitt, despite having 26 hitouts, was poor. Mm. I didn't think she played that well. Off the morph. Not offer. I just thought, again, tough day. It 
it was dead set reigning sideways yeah. at one point. So tough for a Ruckman to have a big day, but I don't think she ha- she didn't take one mark. That she didn't have an impact on the game. You expect a bit more out of him. Same with Rebecca Privatelli as well. Yeah. I expect more from her. Yeah. Especially when the ball's in the forward line for so long, you expect her to try and create something, but only has the seven disposals. The Swans took two marks inside 50 all day. I know it's a hard day to take marks, but yep. that goes to show like their their wasteful their wastefulness going forward. It's a big shout out to the St. Kilda defenders though. You yeah. know, if it's down there so much, you get tired to to keep them uh to not many goals is pretty yeah. good. Yeah, and Scott Gowns, he was very flat after the game, but we probably need to talk about the Swans media department or not, or just in general. It's trying to throw us all off the scent there. It's not, a, it's not a great look because it's also like, this is media hat going on. Yeah. Why would I trust anything they ever tell me now? Do they care if you trust them? I think you've also got to try and keep somewhat of a decent relationship with the media though. I understand with this instance why they did it but it's also like once it's leaked you should have like not tried to double down because once it was tweeted out by Kate McCarthy and Tom Morris they tried to double down and be like no no it's just soreness at that point just release it Mm. yes it's hindsight lets us make lots of uh, choices but that's what they wanted to do it came from Chloe um, and Spoke I th- wonderfully. Watch yeah. the press conference with her. Holy crap, what she's, a person. She's amazing. She's one of the reasons why this game is where it's at. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I've I got no issues with <laughs> a football team misleading the media. Sorry, but the media has never looked after a football team. Never. So, you know. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, fan base is St Kilda. We're going to win the flag. They're two and zero. Oh. They're they're feeling good. They're definitely going to be up there. That's for sure. Yeah. All right, Spencer's and, getting and us to. Swans fans are just like, uh, we need a week of mourning. Please come back to us next week. Yeah, yeah. That's that's where we're at right now. Yeah. Imagine coming off the field as a player there and being like, just lost. Oh, by the way, and- I'm, yeah, <sighs> yeah. Uh, let's get to Fremantle and Adelaide in Perth. Oh, the Dockers zero goal six. Poor Dockers. Well beaten by the Crows five nine thirty nine. Tell you who Freeman or really missed, <laughs> Cara Powers. Yeah, the, it, it it really showed. Yeah, around the contest, they just got belted. Yeah, they needed someone in and under who was going to take it up to Marinoff and, and Anne Hatchard, but just they didn't. They didn't have. Felt like you know when you need an adult. <laughs> they didn't have an adult in the Do room. Do you often find yourselves in that situation? All the time. <laughs> I'm like, I am, I am 33 and nowhere near an adult. Uh, they had chances to kick goals. They didn't. Yeah, just. Well, I mean, a very, in a positive note, keeping Fremantle goalless doesn't make the Bulldogs look too bad. <laughs> no? Bit of a stretch? Bit of a stretch. Okay. Bit okay. of a stretch. Um, yeah, I thought Fremantle, God, they just need a little bit of um, composure. Yeah. They just couldn't get anything. They struggled to uh, hit targets, kick to advantage. Um yeah, it was all just a little bit off, and it then was a big the, everyone crush was under pre- everyone was under pressure. They couldn't get a a bit where they could get a run on. You know, it's a it's a very big fall from last week. Yeah, uh, a very different team to last week. Yeah. You still one and one, but it's like mm, don't yeah. know. I feel like a lot of teams are going to perform like this against Adelaide. Yeah. So yeah. So you try and sort of take where where's the. You know, the the positives there, I thought Ash Brazil. 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 <sighs> Just go Braz. Braz. Ash Braz. Ash Braz. I yeah. need a coffee. Sorry, Ash. Uh, I thought it was fantastic around she's, the footy. She's, well, she's I said incredible they got beat up around the clearance, but she was in there, in there at least having a crack. McCarthy, again, was quite good. Six tackles, had four clearances herself. But just going forward, they just had they had no answers. Yeah. Let's get to Adelaide. They weren't great, but they won. Yeah, absolutely correct. Can I just, before we go any further, talk about the absolute hanger that Zoe Prowse mm. took over on your tie? That's uh, that's going to be close to Mark Damn of the hops. Year. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't jump that high. Like, just it was just a crash over the two. Oh. It was a classic mark. Yeah. Like, just grabs. Well done, Zoe Prowse. They were just, they won. They didn't get out of second year. Oh, out of second, you reckon? They're cruising. I, I said it last week. I think they're going to cruise early in the season, ideally get to sort of 4-0, and and then crank it up. 
Do you find that some teams, top teams, when they play a team that is not as good, sometimes they get dragged a little bit down a level and the other team gets pulled up a little bit and so it ends up with this kind of thing where they end up very similar yeah, on the day. It's, and it's not a sort of a great spectacle to watch. Yeah. You're just like, ah. Yeah. Whereas I, if you're an Adelaide fan, like, it is great with one. Yeah. But as a as someone who doesn't support either team watching, I'm like, oh, this can be, like, I got to sort of halfway through third quarter, like, I'm ready for this to be over. Yeah. I, I know who's going to win. Great. I don't need to see another 30 minutes of it. I think there'll be a couple of meetings during the week with a bit of video analysis and yes. a couple of like there's a lo- there's <laughs> lasers a lo- on the wall. There's a lot to come out going, this is where we can improve yep. on. Let's say something good though. Ev Marinoff laid 18 tackles. 19. 19? Yeah, ended up with 19 and got, got rounded up for another one. <sighs> Nine t- 19 tackles. 60 disposals between Marinoff and Anne Hatchard as well as three of the five goals. There's your game. Yeah. They just went crazy. Madison Newman as well was quite good as well. Her game will be understated because of how good that Marinoff and Hatchard were. Yeah. Good win. Crow's job done. Crow's are just like two and I, baby. Yeah. We're, we're the real deal. Yeah. Um, I thought they defended really well, obviously, because their movement from goalless, the back half was good. Zoe Prowse, Sarah Allen, Chelsea Randall, they were absolutely brick walls down there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Adelaide, they kicked one goal per quarter, except for the last quarter, which they kicked it, two goals. So, you it, know, it wasn't a fun game yeah. to watch it. You know what? Fan bases, Freeman are like, oh, that's, that's not fun. Mm. They're, they're not feeling great this yeah. morning. Crows fans like dubs. Another one in the book. Just dubs. Ooh. Take the dubs. Let's get on the tipping results from this week. We both got six. <laughs> Stats guy got eight. Yeah. He did pretty well, didn't he? Yeah, he's, I'm shocked he's not even doing a victory lap to be mm. honest. Gold Coast let him down. He was fuming about that. All right, full credit. Best team of the round. It's the Hawthorne Hawkballers. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree. Yeah. Dead. <sighs> that was exciting. That was fun. I can't wait. Sunday, 105 that, <laughs> against the Adelaide yeah. Crows. Bring it on. on. There, if Adelaide don't get out of second gear, they're a chance of knocking them off. I could galaxy brain myself into tipping Hawthorne. I could see myself doing it. I can overthink and just be like, yeah, that this is doable. I mean, you'd love to see it, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd love just I'm not, around. I'm not going to tip Hawthorne, but I can definitely see them winning this game. This isn't like, you know, when you've got the Western Bulldogs coming up against, I don't know, let's say St Kilda. I could say, you can't see that happening mm. right now. Mm. I can see Hawthorne causing an upset. Okay. We'll let you have it. Yeah, best, we'll see. We'll see what you do in the preview preview show. Got till Thursday morning. <laughs> best on ground of the week, it's Ali Anderson. Yeah, I'm going to see your Ali Anderson, and oh. I totally agree. I'm just going to put in an Aileen Gilroy just because of those couple of goals. You were there. You were saw it. just incredible. You had a great time. Great. Yeah, hang. I had a re- I had a really great hang actually. I was, yeah, I was. I was. It was on at the pub before I went to the SCG, so yeah. I was watching go. Ah oh, man, this looks cool. Yeah, it looks yeah. And Vic Park, Hill, Tins, Food. Yeah. Sit in the stand, old school stand. It's great. Don't mind, don't mm. mind Vic Park. No bad review this week? No, I couldn't find any bad reviews. Love the positivity, internet. Like we're not digging for them, but if we see them come up in our lives, we will bring them up. It's, yeah. It's been a good start. It's not bad. All right, I don't like it. All right. Well, that'll do us on AFLW today for today. We'll be back on Thursday for the round three preview. Huge weekend of matches coming up. <laughs> Every weekend's going to be huge because huge. we're about to hit the festival of, I'm calling it the festival of footy because midweek footy is back. Yes, it sucks that we have to have to jam in so many games in a short period of time, but midweek footy. I'm pretty excited about that too. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. But midweek footy is great. My girlfriend's going to hate it. I really want to watch this West Coast versus whoever game. Why? Footy. <laughs> footy. Footy on a Tuesday night, babe. Exactly. She couldn't think of anything worse in her life right now. Actually, if the Swans beat Geelong in a grand final, that could be the worst thing that happens you to You would her. be insufferable. I won't go home for a week. <laughs> I'll turn up here on the Monday, still in what I wore to the MCG on the Saturday. Yeah. yeah. And you would just reek of booze. Yeah. Like, yeah. What's up? <laughs> 
<laughs> Might need to get Stats Guy to host that one. All right. <laughs> Big thank you to Sharp Vascaran for jumping on the show today as well. Uh, remember to smash a like across the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X, as well as subscribing on YouTube. It's just AFL Today on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment also across the podcast networks. Again, it is AFL Today wherever you get your good podcast. Make sure to get around cricket today, football today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, of course, the men's show, AFL Today, and hold all tickets. A huge weekend of racing coming up this weekend. That's a lot of words. Thanks, Bryony. Thank you very much for having me, Alex. Shout out to the team behind the camera. We'll catch you later in the week. Look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. Footy's back. Footy's back.